Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with my co-host, Caroline, and my very special guest and friend, Anne O'Keefe Rogers. Welcome. Welcome, Anne. Thank so, you. So glad to be with my, my sister friends. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's been so long. I mean, we were working on, um, on the, comp the April conference together, and then, um, and then, you know, then we got hot and heavy into the quarantine and all of, all of that. It's been an interesting year. And, um, at least, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like years ago, like decades ago, doesn't it? April with the mm -hmm. guardians and gatekeepers, even though it was only a few months ago. Yeah. It feels, it feels like this has been the longest year, the longest year. That's so weird. Cause I don't feel that way for me. It's been short because it's already November, you know, or almost November. Well, I'm thinking November it's September, but I'm thinking November for other reasons. But anyway, it's, it, it just feels short. <laughs> <laughs> it does, and it, um, it's just been interesting. I think it's been a year of, it's just been a lot of stuff coming at us, but a, a lot of transitions, a lot of things that are culminating um, and like coming to a head in different aspects, whether it's, the, you know, our, our racial divide or just our, our, our political divide, like everything has been um, just coming together. In fact, some of my family members who found themselves off work, completely off work in March, had to do a reevaluation. And I think that, that there's been a lot of blessings that have happened through the quarantine and, and just this reevaluation, kind of an interruption to the routine and the tranquilized routine of our lives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's sometimes that's the only way to get things shaken up, you know, so and then it, and then it actually, you know, shakes things up and lets things settle where they need to. And then they produce things like we're going to talk about today with Anne. Um, so yes. Now, Anne, I wanted to just kind of give a little background. Anne is an event coordinator. And I hope I've got that title right, Anne. Um, yes. You put on events and you were significant in helping us put on Guardians and Gatekeepers and going from a live, like we were planning on go, doing a whole live conference. We had people flying in from out of state and it was going to be this live conference and then we got interrupted. But five weeks before the, the conference, you all three of us and as well as our whole planning team we were like nope this is gonna happen we just have to figure out how and, and i remember coming down there on site and doing you know checking out the venue and the hotels and thinking okay this person's coming from here we're gonna have them there and all that and then you know the line if you want to make god laugh tell him your plans right <laughs> and know, what right? evolved out of that was something that reached even more people by going virtual than we had initially anticipated, right, Danica? It, I mean, it was amazing. Like we expanded to, we went from a local event that people could only fly to or drive to, to it touching 12 countries. Yep, literally worldwide. That's, that was incredible, yep. And that's and, awesome. And it, I mean, yeah. that's just the power of, uh, that we have available to us. And uh, one thing I want to get in, uh, talk about is what Anne's project is, which mm -hmm. is yet another event. And it is all about um, drawing on the resources of our faith. Yes. And um, so, Anne, tell us a little bit about what you have coming up in October. Sure, it's a perfect uh, segue because we collaborated, the three of us, along with many others, on the Guardians and Gatekeepers. Uh, and there's some other parental alienation events I've been to, physical in-person events. Time after time, I would talk to alienated parents and they would routinely refer to like their faith being their salvation to get them through that tragedy. When you lose your, your children to parental alienation, it is a trauma, it is a tragedy. So when 
I mentioned the idea, oh, well, we should get together and have a retreat drawing on the, our faith because when there's chaos, we struggle for what's healthy and what is sane. And a retreat is a way to come together in person. There will also be a virtual option, but we are having an in-person physical retreat here in Jacksonville at the Resolution Center where I'm talking to you all from. And it's going to be a small retreat. We have 15 seats. It's a faith-based retreat for alienated parents. The name of it is From Sorrow to Strength. And it's basically being able to draw resources out of the trauma, the chaos. This year, an election year, has been super chaotic in this country. It's an election year, and we all have a choice to make when we vote. But the fact of the matter is, we need to find the points of consensus. And um, we all know that alienated parents have been through so much trauma. Most of us have the signs of chronic PTSD. And when we draw on resources of faith and spirituality, we will be healed. We will become healthy so that if and when our children choose to return, they'll be returning to a whole parent. So that is the goal of this retreat. And Heather Page of Mighty Acorn Health and Wellness is going to be co-hosting the retreat with me. It's October 16th through 18th here at the Resolution Center. And basically it's kind of addressing the fact that every single human being has a God-shaped hole in their heart. So for alienated parents who've lost their children, it's refilling that hole in the heart. It's drawing on our faith, it's drawing on scripture. So it's for Christians, Jews, uh, any religion to basically come together um, and reflect on the resources that we have with our, our faith tradition. I love it. I really do. It's, it's something where you do have to replenish yourself. Um, you know, to, to be whole and complete, there are times like, and I know in my situation and Caroline's situation, even your, all of our situations where, where there is a time when we were non-residential and we uh, could have just gone deeper and deeper down into that dark place. And, um, but it was something inside of us that knew that we had to build ourselves up and bring healing to ourselves. So we would be of, of, you know, we're of no good for anybody if we're not whole and, uh, and bring, doing something for ourselves. So, um, and, and a quick anecdote, I met another alienated mom in a support group in Ohio. She and I pray together every day on the phone for our children and our exes and our family of origin. And that has been, you talk about a lifeline, right? By yeah, lifting yeah. what's on our hearts up, it releases it. And when we're able to share our stories with other alienated parents, we know we're not alone. And um, that's where I really believe there's so much depression and anxiety that comes into a person's heart when they think they're the only one going through this. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, you know, I, I met y'all, your stories were so eerily similar to mine. And then we know of all the other thousands and thousands of parents on the same journey. When you help others on that journey, you're really helping yourself. Yes. Oh, yeah, there's, there's so much similarity. Um, like what I've, what I've learned about the helping yourself, helping others thing is, is um, the connection with helping somebody actually it raises our endorphins and it literally heals our, ourselves, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually uh, through that process too. That's why connecting with people is so important. And a lot of people have been through this isolate. You know, so that's, that's very difficult. You don't feel like you have a connection anywhere when you isolate. 
you know, with, with God or higher, you know, whatever, whatever other people call um, the higher power. But um, it's just it, that connection up, down, out, you know, around whatever that looks like is, is just, it's a healing thing. Um, mm -hmm. that you know, play. yeah. I, yeah, I mean, and it is so important, you know, a lot of times we get into these Facebook groups and we broadcast. We're broadcasting our stuff and a lot of times it's dumping and it's not therapeutic for us or the people who are reading um, and all that. And I know that in the Christian faith, they speak of when two or more are gathered. And, um, and I just love that. I love that aspect of, of Christianity and like for people to really take it to heart when two or more are gathered. It means you've got, you've got another person who's committed to uh, you uh, have, living an amazing life. Besides, of course, the creator of the universe, but having two, an alignment makes all the difference in the world. And it's, and it's interesting because I was, I've been working on, you know, m you know, our next thing for Kids Need Both. And that's something I'm thinking, and, you know, pairing people up, partnering people up um, is mm -hmm. so important. And praying for your ex, God. I, you know, back in the day, I would, people would tell me that and I would just be clenched and I'm like, yes, it's a good idea. And, um, yeah. and I, but in my heart of hearts, mm -mm, because if I pray for them, my heart will be softened. Like this is my, my thinking, my heart will be softened. My guard will be down and I'm going to get screwed over. If right. I feel any compassion for him, that's and, and that, where I came from. And that line in the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If I want to be taken seriously as a Christian, if I want to, that prayer is a covenant prayer, the Our Father. How can I possibly have the audacity to say those words and not mean it? If I don't release it, Forgive it. it doesn't mean not learn from it, not grow from it, and recognize my role, my partial role in that. But that that power of releasing and forgiving, you know, the, the that whole um, concept of the integrity of that, that that prayer for the words that come from my lips to really be lived in my life. That's what we're called to do, and so that's what we're trying with this retreat and with this gathering is um, the commonalities of all of us who've been on this journey and the different phases that we're at because some are new and some are in the middle and some their children might be slowly coming back we're all able to identify with the parts of the journey and with the faith that we share mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd like to add to what you brought up about the forgiveness piece of it because forgiveness it, it's not easy to forgive somebody who's done something so horribly horrible to you, to your children, to other people, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like. The challenge is to recognize that the forgiveness is really not for that. Well, it can, pieces of it can be for that person eventually, but for the healing aspect of it, forgiving someone else actually takes that anger and all that out of you so you can heal to reconnect you may never get back and friend, be friends with them or whatever but you can at least you know for me with forgiveness it was always i had to picture the other person as a child um, being in like multitudes of trauma in order for me to be able to forgive them and you can forgive somebody like that because they're basically stuck at that age in that trauma so it's easier to forgive, but just doing the forgiveness. I took a, a, a personal development course that went back to um, the Bible. Now I'm, I was raised Jewish, so there are pieces of it that I don't, you know, completely know um, in the New Testament. But the one piece that we did was on forgiveness, and it was, um, you know, how many times do you forgive God? I already forgave him. Now why am I thinking this again? Da, 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 da. And they asked Jesus, "Did he tell me if this is?" 
right or wrong, but they asked Jesus and Jesus said 70 times seven. So that was like a, okay, that means what? That means I got to keep forgiving and forgiving. But the forgiving isn't for them. It's for you and your connection, however you connect, you know, whatever that looks like. So right. it's hard and it's simple. Right. So, it's, yeah. you know, it, I think this is what makes it kind of hard because like I have it that forgiveness is gi giving up the right to hold them to account for that, that infraction, that offense. You're giving up the right to bring it up again. So that's why it's like, you got to keep forgiving, 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 forgiving. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely a difference between um, giving up the right to bring that offense up and being a doormat. So anybody want to tackle that one? It's that balance, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, um, you don't ever want to be a doormat because that would be complete submission. Um, and it's a balance of recognizing your your codependency, I'm, I'm going to speak about myself, right? Recognizing the elements of codependency that I may have shown and may. Mm -hmm. Also, not being afraid to call somebody out when they're saying, what acceptable, what you did, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, to tag on to that is. Um, yeah a lot of it is where you're coming from um if you're secretly resenting someone and then you and you you, you can use the same words when you're talking to them um and and bringing up an offense or whatever but if you haven't forgiven them it's going to land so differently than somebody who's genuinely not triggered not hooked by um what has happened so I guess my, you know, my thing is, is if you're triggered by something, that is a sure sign, a red flag that, wait a minute, there's something unhealed inside of me exactly. that I need to work on. Exactly. Yeah. And then and the piece that you brought up is hugely important about resentment is um, when you feel these negative type feelings like resentment and anger and, and shame and fear, those types of feelings, we're meant to have those feelings. They're supposed to be there like a, as a GPS guidance system for our lives. However, those energies are so, like I'm coming from more of a energetic um, perspective, but the energies are low, you know, like the love energy I think is like 750 vibrational. And I'm gonna, that's music and all that stuff, but vibration of, set of love is up high. And then shame is like at 20 or something like that. So it, it, it's a very slow, you know, and when your body is in shame or in anger or um, whatever, below the 200s, it, it literally causes illness and disease. So if you stay in that resentment and never forgive the forgiveness, the gratitude, all that stuff actually helps to raise that in your body and heal that. So there's a connection, there's a connection up you know, and for me, I also connect down to the earth. So there's a connection up and down to connect everything because it's all part of, to me, it's part of the same system. But um, the resentment, if you hold on to resentment, it, it's a hard long haul out because it's going to, it's going to hurt you mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, it'll help hurt everyone. Well, you're right. You're, you're spot on, Caroline. But the other part of it, too, is when you're holding on to resentment, it comes out sideways. Oh, that's true. It, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. it comes out with mm -hmm. It comes out sideways. There's yeah. no denying that. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and who, who of us have not experienced that sideways coming out? And then the shock on somebody's face. Like, I even did that this morning. I, I got up, I was a little groggy, I was a little tired, and, you know, Danica had asked okay. me to, to join in this, and it was like, all of a sudden, I'm in a rush, I start getting overwhelmed, and, da, 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 and I start to, re and he's moving too slow, and, da, 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 da. and I'm like, wait, wait, and I said something to him, and after I was done, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I really didn't need to do that. <laughs> Yeah. So, God forbid you have to share a bathroom because that's when all hell breaks loose. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So stay out of the kitchen, stay out of the bathroom, don't get yeah. Yeah. So 
So, so again, let me, um, I know we have just a few more minutes, so I want to make sure that people know it's in, it, the event is in Jacksonville. It yes. is, oct it's a three-day event, October yes. what? 16th through 18th at the Resolution Center in Jacksonville, Florida. We're having a meet and greet Friday night. The seminars are Saturday during the day, Sunday worship. There's going to be one concluding seminar and then everybody goes home refreshed, renewed and re-energized with faith. That's awesome. You know, and like strength. and strength and strength and um, and, faith is strength. Even, yeah. and you probably will find some like forever friends in the process. Um, mm -hmm. People that you can and, and, and in this work. There's so many, um, there is a feeling of loneliness, lo lo loneliness and how people just do not get what you're going through. And a lot of times if you're not healed, um, people will help you for a little bit, but if you don't start working, taking an active role in bringing, bringing healing to yourself, people just get exhausted, mm -hmm. um, you know, from helping you. And, um, and it's not because they don't care and uh, that there's just only so much that people, you know, have to give to other people. Um, and I just, I they absolutely have their own stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to add, they have their own stuff. So it's like your stuff added to their stuff and yeah, it's just too much at some point. So, and, um, and I just wanted to put a plug in about the resolution center. What an amazing organization up in Jacksonville. And I, and I've talked to you before, we need a resolution center in every circuit in the state of Florida and beyond uh, because they're all about bringing uh, healing to hurting families and uh, without it, you know, getting them out of the litigation and actually um, making a difference to families. Tina Mayer is the founder of the resolution center and her vision is amazing to make that healing and resolution in a realistic way. Many people are not independently wealthy when they divorce and they don't have buckets and buckets of money to throw at attorneys. So this is a very realistic way for a lot of families. So what she's doing is really amazing. Very powerful. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys. Well, it is time to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Anne, for bringing it to my attention. Yeah. And, um, yeah. A lot of times, you know, we, we try to be of service to other people who are creating like-minded conferences and, um, and all that. Uh, but a lot of times it takes somebody reaching out and saying, Hey, did you know? So thank you for reaching out to us, Anne. And, um, and, I and that's really kind of an invitation to other people to reach out. If you've got something going on, let us know. We'll bring you on too. And, you know, right. uh, highlight the same way, whatever we did here. So yeah thank all you right. ladies for everything you're doing ah uh, thank you, you too, uh, thank all you right much. that is that's all for the day today i hope you have a great evening and thank you for joining us on custody matters live have a great